every time I have a gospel singer or performer on this show, all y'all be in the comments saying you're trying to get closer to God. And I am, even in my private <laughs> time. But now I have a gospel legend, Yolanda Adams. You know, I walked up to you um, in Atlanta and I was surprised that you knew who I was. I was because, um, I mean, I know I meet a lot of people, but I revere you so high. Um, there's been many low moments where your music has gotten me through. Thank and I know you. like many people, people watch and say, yeah, me too. So it was so... Um, validating for like the journey that I'm on to have a legend know who I am but more importantly to be able to give you your flowers in person so I'm honored that you came to this studio today oh come on I love this space this space is cool I was geeking over how you know I, I need this in my life no <laughs> Listen, you're the only person that can use it rent free you can oh it you are just you so sweet thank you so much but I mean listen let's talk about pop culture and all of that uh, you are at the forefront of what is happening culturally. Thank you. So we know who you are. We Thank believe you. what you say. And when you sit down with people, you're able to pull out of them, you know, sometimes things that other folks can't. Thank you. And so that's a, that's a sign of a great journalist. Mm. And I know you're more than just a journalist, but, you know, you know that was my major in uh, college. So. Oh, really? Yes. So, Wait, so you would have been out here doing all of this? Well, you've done radio. You've, I've done, done radio, radio, yes, and we're still we're we're building from radio to do television and all of that, and yeah. But what part of this business attracted you? Because I didn't grow up knowing I wanted to do journalism or talk. You know, I just love pop culture. I love black culture. I love celebrity culture. So I knew I wanted to be in it, but I didn't have no talents. I can't sing. I sung on my Instagram a Beyonce song yesterday, and all the comments were like, "Please go back to your day job." <laughs> But why, why, why did this attract you? Oh, it attracted me for several reasons. Uh, I'm a lover of people, and I loved how people navigate through trials and, you know, stuff that they go through. And I love big stories. I love things that make people think. Because, you know, with journalism, you have the opportunity to pull stuff out of people and then ask them the questions that other folks don't ask, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is why I like what mm -hmm. you do. Because, you know, every now and then you get a little basic, okay, so how did you feel about so-and-so? And, -so? Yeah, and, that and, and what do you expect us, what are we, sh what should we expect from this and this and that? It's like, <sighs> Well, I, I feel like, because I'm a fan of the culture, I don't want to do an interview that I wouldn't watch. Right. You know, so if, if I know I have, first of all, I learned so much about you preparing for today that I didn't even know. Because oh, okay. When I see you, I see you, you're always a light. You're always giving back to people and, and filling them up. Like when we were in um, Atlanta for the BMI event. Yes. Or I think it was a BMI event with Catherine Bruton. It was, was with Catherine Bruton. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you got up and gave your speech, your speech was really blessing everybody in the audience with the word oh. that they probably needed to hear. Good. So do you find yourself always being that person that wants to build other people up? Yeah. I got that. I grew up like that. I'm the oldest of six kids. So I grew up knowing that your words can change people's day. They can change people's lives. And so uh, trying to encourage my brothers and sisters to do better, be better, all of that kind of stuff. They didn't listen sometimes. No, y'all didn't. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I think that role was innately in me as the oldest and having to uh, gather and garner the troops while mom and dad did what they had to do. Um, I, I just believe that there's so much power in kindness. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do that, who's going to do it? But you don't ever have a bad day. Yes. But I mean, why don't we ever get to see it? Like, I want to see Yolanda Adams in a road rage incident. Where, <laughs> now, that you won't where see. We just have to read them to heaven, you know? No, yeah, no, nah, you, you won't see the road rage. <laughs> you know, I, I'll get, you know, I'll go as far as to say, oh, that just pissed me off, you know, kind of <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's as far as you get with the cussing. So, you know, unless it's Danita, Danita but it, Jordan. But, it, but is, it, is it because, what gives you the restraint to not go all the way and lose it? Because is it your faith in God? Is it just your character? Is it just the energy you want to give out in life? Because I, I, I try. Um, <laughs> there are days I say, Lord, you know. I'm, you know I'm, me. I'm going to be a better. <laughs> yeah, you know me. You created me in your right. likeness, even right now. Um, but then there's days where I'm just like, I can't. Yeah, I think it's a combination of all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, the one thing I don't want ever is for somebody to get a snap of me, you know, you, just, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then it goes viral. And then all of my folks are like, well, we can't support her anymore. She said a cuss word, you know, right, right. that kind of thing. But like that happened with 
you're friends with Kirk Franklin. That happened with him and his yes, son. Yes, it did happen. But why can't people? I look at like Kirk and all of his contributions in the like to to world music and faith mm -hmm. and all that and what he stands for. And he has a moment, of what he thought was a private moment with his child. Right. When when you see something like that, or even Kim Burrell and with yes. the church and the gay comments. Mm -hmm. Why are we as a people not as forgiving when it comes to our own? I think it's years and years and years of brainwashing and gaslighting and all of that kind of stuff. Because, I mean, you have to give people a break. If you want a break, give people a break. If you want forgiveness, give forgiveness. If you want kindness, give kindness. I've known Kirk and Carry On for years. And so that dynamic, they know each other. And they know what that means. It is unfair for me to step in there and say, well, you know, Kirk, that was horrible. And so, eh. That's not my role. Right. My role is friend. My role is sister. For carry on, it's auntie. You know, and uh, unfortunately, because of the world we live in now, people will take those private moments and abuse them and use them for their own advantage. Unfortunately, they don't want you to see their scars and their skeletons and all of that stuff. So, I mean, when I saw it, I immediately um, wanted to make sure that they both were okay. Mm. Because, you, you know, we, we, we're in this uh, social space now. People can blow up something that was intended, like you said, for a private moment between Kirk uh, carry on and uh, the mother because now you got this triangle going then you got this family thing going and then everybody wants to pick sides why are we picking sides how come we just can't pick truth but see you said something that I think and I, I struggle with because um, I just interviewed uh, Patrice Cullors the co-founder of the Black Lives Matter movement I really feel like she's in the middle of a mainstream witch hunt lynching mm -hmm. where they're trying to build a narrative that's not necessarily true and we have bought into it black people we bought into it. and I feel like when it comes to the carry-ons and the Kirks or mm -hmm. a Kimberell and you know somebody who's gay and who who didn't like the comments I also still play her music and I love what she does for gospel music and there that was a moment remember that was a moment of frustration mm -hmm. that she had just getting off a plane mm -hmm. somebody said something snappy to mm -hmm. her and you know again that was somebody in her congregation who happened to be taping that day mm -hmm. and taped that whole thing. So, you know, again, love Kim with all my heart, but I don't want anybody to prejudge her or judge her on a 15 minute blurb or a five minute blurb and forget the legendary um, talent that she actually is. Yeah, and I say we're not the sum of one mistake. No. You know, or, or a sum of one idea. And that's why I think like, I've seen moments where our people, I think, have just gone a little too far. And this is Jason's thought saying, you know, I just feel like we're not as forgiving. And when you said, you know, we want compassion, we want love, we want all these things, but it's easy to forget all that when it doesn't apply to us. Like it's easier to apply judgment and whatever on other people. But it shouldn't be mm -hmm. that easy. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because I, I'm very thoughtful in the way I speak and what I say and how I uh, use my words. And I've been like that all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister and I were talking the other day and she's like, you know what, you always said that you were <laughs> a billionaire. I said, I jumped from millionaire to a billionaire just by saying the words, mm -hmm. you know, as a teenager. And she's like, you've, al and you've always spoken what you wanted and you got it. I'm like, you know what, I didn't even think about that, yeah.